So Donald Trump made a rare, really rare public appearance outside of Mar-a-Lago this weekend. You may have seen he showed up at the celebration of life ceremony for the late conservative streamer known as Diamond and complained that it was taking too long. That's not made up. Now, Diamond died earlier this month reportedly of heart disease, and her sister, the other half of the Diamond and Silk duo, turned her eulogy for her sister at this event into a rant against COVID vaccines, complete with some weird misinformation about how the vaccine is killing people. Instead of asking if Americans are vaxxed or unvaxxed, the real question to ask is, are Americans being poisoned? Technically, and according to the science, it doesn't matter if you're vaxxed or not. As long as the gain of function allows one injected person to transfer and infect another person, and that person infect another person, eventually everyone will be affected in one way or the other. People are dropping dead around here. And nobody's talking about it. The catchphrase is sad, S-A-D, sudden adult death syndrome. Many calls it a conspiracy theory. I call it murder. Okay, now, uh, whew, first things first. Uh, n that's not true. It doesn't even really cohere. Uh, the gain-of-function references to gain-of-function research. But to folks who travel in some conservative circles, the idea that the COVID vaccine is, like, jumping from person to person, even people that haven't gotten the vaccine, and, and by so doing, like, through the air, causing masses of otherwise healthy people to suddenly drop dead is basically treated as canon, as outlandish as that is. I, I mean, really, this is a mainstream stream belief among the far right in this country. It was particularly notable earlier this month when right-wingers immediately either said or implied that Damar Hamlin, the Buffalo Bills safety who had to be rushed to the hospital after he suffered a cardiac arrest on the field after a tackle to his chest, that he was actually the victim of heart disease caused by the vaccine. Hamlin was still lying on the field receiving CPR when self-described medical experts in the media, people with no demonstrated medical ethics at all, effectively witch doctors, decided to use his tragic life-threatening injuries an opportunity to spread still more propaganda about the COVID shots. It could not have been the shot, they told you. Shut up. But they're lying. They don't know that. Okay, well, now we do know what it was. Uh, that's the kind of, that's the, you know, you see what he's doing, actual sanitized, just asking questions version of this new different information. Like, I'm not saying it was the COVID vaccine, but I'm not saying it's not. And should we rule it out? Again, based on nothing, like out of nowhere, the guy just dropped dead. Like, well, it's a vaccine D dropped in, uh, to the field. Now, that disinformation that has blossomed out of the Hamlin tragedy, it's got a whole life of its own now. As NBC News reporter Ben Collins points out, that all kinds of insidious bad faith actors are right now want you to believe that DeMar Hamlin died as a result of the vaccine and has been replaced by a body double. And I suppose that Hamlin's family and the NFL and the Bills and everyone's all in on it. This is the anti-vaccine messaging that is, again, I, I can't stress this enough, absolutely permeated conservative media and the conservative consciousness to the point that it is just accepted as uncontroversial, the vaccine kills, accepted in the same way that epidemiologists accept the clear data that vaccines significantly reduce mortality and severe illness from COVID and have saved hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives worldwide. If you don't believe me, just watch this riff from conservative, a conservative meeting at a far-right conference last week. My in-laws are like, we gotta get our flu shot, then a booster, then another booster. <laughs> and I'll say, you know, people are starting to die. Where'd you hear that? <laughs> what are you, one of those conspiracy theorists? Here in the NFL. <laughs> You see what's happening there, right? I mean, like that, that joke lands in that room because everyone in the room already knows it. That it, oh, yes, right. DeMarc Hamlin dropped on the field because of the COVID vaccine. And this has been going on essentially since vaccines first became widely available. It's gotten worse recently. 
But there's been deceptively edited videos that have spread like wildfire on social media, depicting athletes collapsing on the field, falsely attributing it to the vaccine. In at least one case, the video was from nearly a decade before the pandemic even began. If you aren't participating in or observing these conversations on the right, it can be difficult to grasp, again, just how widespread this belief really is. Governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, clearly understanding there's a political opening for him, has no problems pushing dangerous nonsense to the people of his state. Almost every study now has said with these new boosters, you're more likely to get infected with the bivalent booster. So what possible reason could you force that? It's just flatly, un that's just untrue. I mean, you hear everyone in the room of one. The bivalent boosters do not make you more likely to get COVID. They do, and we have more and more data on this, they really do protect against its worst outcomes, however. They work very well, in fact, as we see across the world and across the country. But make no mistake, people are dying. They are dying of COVID. Do you know that COVID remains the third leading cause of death in this country? It's the third year in a row that it was. And uptakes of the new vaccines, like the bivalent one, is shockingly low. Estimates indicate only about 16% of eligible Americans have gotten the shots. This chart shows vaccine booster uptake in the U.S. is significantly lower than many other countries, including China, Israel, the entire European Union, Chile. We're the green line at the bottom. And it's not the full reason why, but a big reason why is the far right whipping up anti-vaccine frenzy that's gotten worse and worse and, and more mainstream. A, a preprint of a new study that analyzes data from Florida and Ohio shows that since vaccines became available, right, that's the key moment, excess deaths in Republican voting counties are more than 150% greater than those in Democratic counties. But the author is noting, quote, the gap in excess death rates between Republicans and Democrats is concentrated in counties with low vaccination rates and only materializes after vaccines become widely available. Anti-vax rhetoric makes people sick. It can get people killed. In the aggregate, it has done that to tens of thousands of people who didn't have to die. Now that the anti-vax Republican Party has taken federal power on Capitol Hill, how do you think they're using it? By launching a new subcommittee to investigate the COVID pandemic and the federal response to it. A subcommittee featuring none other than Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has spread countless noxious, monstrous, not to met preposterous, conspiracies, including those about vaccines. In fact, get this, just over the weekend, the latest member of the select subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic responded to a video from that eulogy I played a moment ago by writing, quote, I demand an immediate investigation to COVID vaccines and the dramatic increase of people dying suddenly. That is how Republicans will be using their new authority.